Welcome to Dyson Sphere Program. My name is Niels, and this is a brand new type of series here of uh, our Dyson Sphere Program here on the channel. It will basically be a masterclass on Dyson Sphere Program. I know I've been uh, releasing tutorials here and there, but this is going to be sort of very crisp and all encompassing. So what I'll be doing in this series is going to be going through all the designs in the game. I'll be presenting early game designs, I'll be presenting mid game designs, I will be presenting late game designs. For all the cases, I will be having blueprints that you can download from my website, link in the description below. So you can always get all the blueprints. If you're a patron supporter, you can also get save games from my Let's Plays, but that's another matter. So uh, I hope this is interesting. We are going to start with smelting today and do everything we can do about smelting so that by the end of this episode, you have you don't need to think about smelting anymore if you don't want to. You can take my blueprints and you can apply them in the early, the mid and the late game. So sit back, relax and enjoy the ride as we dive into uh, what is hopefully going to be the start of a wonderful series. And uh, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to keep up with more of uh, this kind of content. Now I started on this planet. It is a uh, it's around a black hole because whatever wherever I die, do my tutorials, it always ends up being darkness. So at least with an 80 se 84 second uh, rotation period, it's going to be light uh, here ago and it's already dawn again. Now, what we're going to do in terms of smelting. First of all, we need to realize things that there are some things that can be smelted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven and then two alternates that also belong. So there are 11 uh, unique smelting designs and then two alternates that can also be done in smelting. I'm going to disregard a titanium alloy because we'll come back to that at a later point. Now, for these things, there are only three designs. And before we dive into those designs, first, I want to talk a bit about sort of all of my designs across all of my, uh, my playthroughs. So if you want to uh, apply them easily to your, your world, then these are the things that I do in terms of design principles. I am always using my planetary sectors. These are, as indicated here, uh, delimited on uh, with the tropics here. Uh, so this is a tropical zone. I'm calling this a subtropic zone. It might be the temperate, but we'll call it that. So this is the tropic zone closer to the equator. And we have the subtropic zone. If you want to know more about it, then uh, I have a video on uh, planetary sectors, but everything will be contained either within one planetary sector in width or more likely in two planetary sectors. And then my designs will be in height. They will be uh, so that I can put three of these. All my designs will be using uh, planetary logistics systems. I, you can switch them to interstellar logistics systems. I'm just using planetary because that's kind of how I like my designs to work. Uh, I will always be placing them at specific locations. So that is also important. I place them one square of the big five by five squares inbound and then I place them three squares in from the side three squares from the other side and then in the middle of this section all my designs are designed to always work in the middle area and some of them when I mentioned it will be working also in this area this area is a bit smaller so uh, some designs will also work in here so I think those are sort of the uh, the very uh, basic things another thing is that I will always be placing them clockwise and uh, they'll, they'll be flowing clockwise and uh, when facing north on a planet. That's just how I do all of my designs. So if you want to make it look neat uh, the way I do it, those are the design parameters. Let's dive into the smelting because, as I said, there are only three different smelting designs. And we're going to look at it. One is a one-to-one -one where we take one item in and get one item out. So that is a very simple design. The second design is another one where we take two in. And then in two seconds, we make one. So that's a two to one. I call that a single. I call that a double. And then the last step here is called a two step. This is where we have a sub component going into a finished product and then going out. Um, and let's group those up in uh, and look at those. Which ones are what? Single, singles, single, 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 um, and single. So we have four that are singles. Then we have the double ones. That is the high purity. That's the two to one. High purity, two to one. Glass is high purity, two to uh, Yeah, okay. What? Silicon is two to one. Titanium is two to one. Glass is two to one. And uh, then there was, oh, and graphite is two to one. So there's also four here. Then the double components, that's the steel. That's the crystal silicon. And that's the diamonds. If we make it from raw materials. If we want to use 
the crystal silicon or the diamonds then well it's a one to two so uh, th those are kind of eh, kind of a different one but they are so limited that i have omitted them from here so that means that from our design perspective we have four that follows uh, the single pattern four that follow the double pattern and three that follow the two-step pattern cool now let's talk about the three dimensions that is uh, different steps in the process or uh, different steps in the uh, in the early game the mid game and the very late game the way I define early game is this is the first time you really start uh, building this in any serious manner. Let's hook it up and then see what it's... Uh, oops, there we go. H hook it up and see how it works. At this point, we have the normal arc smelters and we have uh, conveyor belts Mark II and we have using, we're using smelters Mark III. Now, you c will of course have some small smelters before that, but this is really the first time when you think, you know what, I'm going to need to scale up smelting and then you start building this pattern and if you want you can always just copy paste it to another location here over here now this build is 510 facilities so you will need red signs in order to copy paste this with blueprints i don't think that's a problem but that's just a heads up for for you to know so this part here is constrained by the fact that these belts can only transport 12 per second i wonder if that says oh yeah speed cargo 12 per second that means i can only have a total of 12 uh, assemblers or 12 smelters to in one row uh, and then they will be uh, exhausted. You can see here, it only just barely makes it into the last one at any given time. So that's the early game smelter. This will produce 48. And if we look at our designs, I will have them here for copper, iron, and stone bricks and smelters. Smelters are, sl oh, sorry, magnets. The magnets are slightly different because they're just the same recipe, but they run a bit slower. So you could make it bigger, but then it will fit more than one uh, planetary sector. So I don't want that. The next one is the double pattern. We are also going to enable this. This is the double pattern. So in this case, what I'm doing is I am, if we can just get it in, and uh, maybe we'll just get this one in so that it's prepared for next round when we do that. Here, I am going to bring it in at these locations. So I'm bringing in here two. And I can then bring it in on a consolidated belt. So I get 12 out here and I get 12 out here and then only 12 returning on the middle belt. This means that even though I am consuming 48, then I'm only producing 24 per second. So this build is 24 silicon and it would be the same for titanium as well or for graphite or for glass because they're exactly the same recipe. So 24 per second for this build and we can see that it's working and uh, as it sort of saturates you can see that it will just barely but well, it will get to the last one you can always check these yellow indicators uh, the yellow indicators means that they're idle either because of input constraint or output constraint and you can see now it this one is uh, so slightly idle but it will now start working consistently as well now the last part is uh, even less uh, less output here we have uh, we have Inbound, we have the double, the two-step process where we make iron, and in this case, we need three iron into in three iron into one steel, and it's on a three-second cycle. So we are consuming twelve iron here and twelve iron here. So that's twenty-four iron, and then it divided by three. So this is only eight steel per second. That is quite disappointingly low, but well, that is steel. Uh, it is more complicated to do. So this is the three designs that you will need, and again. Going back here, all the designs are available. They are just ready to stamp down in your own build if you feel so inclined. Now we get to the next step, and that's the mid game. So in the mid game, uh, this is where I define it as you now have Mark III uh, assemblers or Mark III belts, and uh, that means they can, can transport 30. So you need to make a, a design that is 30 deep, and this is what we have here. Uh, I think the easiest way to illustrate that is simply do a blueprint, and you can see that there are. 30 of each on this row so that will consume a full belt also be mindful that you will um, you will need to have pretty good support in order to fulfill this so we'll be uh, getting in here and uh, they will need to be flying up out pretty damn uh, consistently to be able to fill this up and i'm also going to start the next one just so that we are ready and as this uh, comes in we will now in this case be consuming and producing 120 per second we are still getting it out it's exactly the same design as up here what is also important is that i have designed this build uh, the power pole placement might look a bit silly 
but the reason why I've designed it like this is because it is a compromise between having the mid game or uh, the early game one because what you will do in the early game one once you have mark three belts you can upgrade all the belts and you can extend them down here and then it'll be uh, automatically turned into this belt uh, this design instead and I think that's super nice uh, for example if you in the early game decide to build two of these next to each other like this then you can sort of when you get the next belt you can replace it and instead of building 48 plus 48 you build a, a consolidated one of 120 uh, here you can see we are barely keeping up but we are keeping up with uh, with the design here so that is excellent and uh, this goes forward and uh, this will produce 120 per second and I am really happy about this build and this is the one I'm using far beyond what you when I can actually move into the next because I think that 120 going through one of these is about the maximum you can uh, you can support and uh, that's that's just how I, I feel about it but uh, I also feel that they are good because they don't use so much power so I'm not really one who who is super quick on moving to the next tier the tier being uh, being the, the face the plane smelter but we uh, we like the arc smelter here so we're going to continue on it now the next one this is the silicon or the double so it's going to be silicon glass titanium and graphite that is going to be uh, requested up here and we are also again consuming 120 because we have it out on four belts that are each uh, 30 deep and it comes down on a consolidated belt in the back in the middle here where we'll be consuming or we'll be producing half as much you can see in this case well we are actually able to keep it up and it just barely 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 gets to the end of the line keeping the last ones online as well uh, it's it's always going to take a bit of time and they get down here and then they will be working over time they will be working 100% uh, and they will be uh, providing and if they're not well it's if whether it's 58 I don't really care so much so this will produce not 120 but 60 titanium uh, titanium silicon glass or graphite per second really cool build and also very uh, easy in this case I have to put the power poles on the outside that's just how it is I could do it another way but I really like this also at this point if you're asking why am I not using uh, these power poles the satellite substations well that would mean the, the build would be too wide and I really don't dislike the look of this and I really really dislike the how much power they consume idle consumption is 720 kilowatt it might not seem like a lot but when you have the entire planet litter then you end up being having like 50 to 100 megawatt of uh, consumption just for power poles I don't like that now onwards to the last step this is the two-step process in this case again we have the same build as we have up here again you might notice that the power poles look a bit weird in here because they're kind of afterwards and couldn't you make it better yes you could but then in this case it actually follows the same pattern all the way down and then it fits with power poles for the entire build so let's get that in here and oh wow we are not getting enough uh, enough here so we are probably over consuming how about we just disable you and get some of you in here there we go onwards so here we start making our iron and the iron goes into steel and that will now be making up here we were only doing eight and in here we're doing two and a half times as much so that is 20 20 steel per second it is really not a lot the good thing though is that since everything here is in planetary sectors then for this location here i could make 60 and if i go down here then it's it's 120 and of course there are well I don't know if that's of course but there are 10 of these locations all the way around so you basically have if you look at these ones there are 20 of those locations uh, on a planet uh, usually I don't uh, take the ones that are full of mining locations but if you want to have a dedicated smelting planet then that is the way to do it so that is basically the mid game this is what I use way 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 more time and uh, this is also in terms of mid game when do I define that well I don't use the or I don't have access to the infinite science so there's no stacking of anything at this point uh, stacking output if they used stacking output we could make it more efficient fewer belts but if uh, I had to request or had to do a design with stacking output then it really wouldn't be mid game anymore because it would require some infinite science and uh, this one can be used pretty damn quickly you can use it as soon as you have the yellow science and then just start smashing it down because well tech wise if we look at this it just requires uh, where are you? It, it, this is the Mark 2. Where are, is, where's the Mark 3? 
There we go. There's the Mark III. And yeah, so you could technically actually get make this already at this point. Well, you can. So um, that's pretty damn efficient. And now for the final step. The final step is the very late game where you have everything unlocked. All the signs is unlocked and available. You have tons of plane smelters that you can use for whatever you want. You can uh, you have the stacking. Unfortunately, in this setting, I don't have the stacking. But I will show you in another game uh, where we do have the stacking unlocked. But this design is valid in nonetheless. We are going to start requesting it in here. Uh, this will be requesting a lot, so make sure that your power is maximized. Uh, also make sure that you have maximum output. What happens in this build is that if this was, um, when it's working, it'll output 120. And you can see that there, we, there are some pilers, automatic pilers here, making sure that things get sorted on the way back. Uh, in this case, you can see that it doesn't reach more than like a one fourth quarter of the way. But that's going to be something I'll show you a bit later. Uh, in this case, uh, the next one is also a uh, bigger one. Wow, did I just run out of that? Yeah, I did. Uh, we want to go there. Okay, they're coming out. And I am also going to do that one. So for this one, we are having pretty much the same thing. We are pulling it out here in uh, if, if you look at the difference between our mid game one, where we have two outputs to one input in uh, this case, if we have stacking, we can actually do one output, which can output 120 because it can stack four high. And then that will be feeding into 60 on either side, 60 on this will be 30 on the outside, which means I don't need any pilers to stack it up. I'll also show this in a, another game, but we'll just sort of show it here while, when we are building it. Uh, here we have uh, the last one, the steel. In this case, we are sending it out here. This has come out as 120 on either side, but we are only going to be using 60. So I'm going to be 60 on this side, 60 on this side. It consumes 120 iron and will be outputting 40 uh, steel per second. Let me uh, just show because in this case you can clearly see how little it actually works because it's uh, relying on on uh, this design here is relying on two things. It's relying on pilers for the return product and it is relying on uh, stacking outputs. So let's jump on into another game where this is already available. So here we are on a uh, massive smelting planet and the reason why I didn't do the tutorial on this build is up here in the top left hand corner you can see the FPS is 18 and that is not super impressive. But what we're going to do is uh, I will show you how they work each of these builds. I will just make sure that I don't run full on this because that is basically the most uh, the biggest problem. We're going to take a look at the each of the three builds in, uh, in turn. What you can see on this build is that we move out here this is uh, stacked up to four so that means it can come out at 120 per second and going down here this line and this each of these lines will consume 60 so it can actually consume 120 per second now a lot of the stuff on the belt movement looks absolutely weird because it uh, it does look weird because of uh, the frames that sometimes it doesn't look like it's moving and there we go it's already half full oops uh, look at that I did not want to do that and then let's have a look at what happens because if i have 60 iron smelters mark 2 or 30 iron smelters mark 2 that's the same as that will be 60 output that means i take the first 15 like this and that will be the first 15 here they will be outputting a full belt that is uh, up to 30 per second and then i put it into a smelter or no a piler which means that now it becomes every other tile is too high and every other tile is empty when they're empty the next seven can output not eight but seven can output and then it goes into another one now some will be stacked up to three high some will be stacked to two high some will be uh, there won't be anyone at one high and there will be some will be empty which will now mean the next seven again can be put in here and then it'll be again stacked up and then we still have some empty spaces because now some of them are stacked up to four some to three some to two and some are empty and that means the last two can also output that is a way to get a full line here of uh, uh, of smelters 60 smelters to go in on this line i have tried in different configurations and i have been unable to find a uh, lower number than half basically you need to do half and half and half but since 15 is half of 30 that makes sense but then half of 15 is seven and a half you can't do seven and a half so you'd have to do seven and that means the remaining eight can't go in on one so it needs to be another seven and then another one uh, another uh, pilot here to just keep stacking it up 
and it works wonderful and uh, you can see how quickly it scales up and that's basically the main problem this design here is consuming and producing 240 per second and that is just way more than uh, than is easy to get in and out of a planetary logistics or interplanetary for that matter as well so that is uh, something to keep in mind and let's go over to the other one here tier two and this is also stacked up they stack up so damn fast here what we're seeing here is unlike the mid game one the mid game one had two outputs for either side and one input this one has one input of 120 120 goes into each of these can each line consuming 60 so that will consume 120 in total and going out on the outbound side each of these 30 will produce 30 per second since they would usually they would produce 30 per second which means that a single belt without any staggers can handle the return flow as well pretty simple as well for this one uh, we have two return flows Let's have a look at the steel one. The steel one is a bit uh, different because uh, in this case we are now producing. Uh, we're sending it out here to 120 on either side and that is uh, going to be each side here is consuming 60 and 60 on that side and it goes in and produces 20 in the middle and 20 in here and if I put that on a single belt that'll be 40 on a single belt. If I wanted to put 40 on a second belt I would have to um, have to use a piler. If I wanted to use a piler then I couldn't have two have these inserting into the same spot because there's just no room for it so in this case i have made it symmetrical and uh, made two return lines each with 20 and it works just fine as well so this is a a the steel is slightly different but it does the same thing and this will now produce 40 steel per second so you can see there's a lot of uh, of these designs we'll be jumping back uh, to the other planet and back to the original planet so we are going to just uh, wrap up with a single detail that i uh, know that some of you might be wondering what about proliferation and that is a whole topic in itself and i'll be doing a tutorial a master class on uh, proliferation but the short answer is anything that is less valuable than colon and carbon nanotubes should not be proliferated so if you look at any planet, you will be most likely have lots more iron, lots more copper, uh, lots more stone than you will have coal and specifically the spiny form. So do you really want to use coal and spiny form uh, to make carbon dioxide, uh, carbon nanotubes, to make proliferators in order to get free uh, resources here for, for this? No, in my case, no. It costs more power, it costs more of your more precious resource. So I never do it for stuff that is basically infinite. When you get to a certain point in the game, then uh, these resources become pretty much infinite and I don't feel the need to uh, to make it either neither faster nor get free stuff in, uh, in this case. So that's just for my preference. So my uh, rule of thumb is that I will only use it for stuff that is more expensive than uh, than what I'm, than coal and carbon nanotubes. So that means none of this, none of the stuff here is melting. So that's, um, that's basically it. You can see that we have basically done uh, nine different designs, early, mid, late game, for the three types, the single, the double, and the two-step. So I hope you found this useful. Remember, all of these blueprints are available in my Google Drive. You can find it in the link in the description, the links to my website, where I have all the resources available for all the blueprints that I make. So you can easily find whatever you want and get it into your own game and they will also be continuously updated so if i find mistakes or errors and that kind of thing then i'll update it and they will be automatically uploaded to uh, to the drive and i hope that's uh, something you find useful it's just uh, kind of how i want to do these master classes i want to make sure that i provide as much uh, information as possible for you so it makes it easier for you to do that now at this point i'll be uh, appreciating a like subscribe of course and uh, sharing this of course helps a lot and uh, if you have good ideas for what the next topic is I have tons of ideas then uh, let me know in the comment section below because I'd like to do these in the order of what is most impactful so thank you very much for watching thank you everyone who is supporting me on patreon that is right I can put in this effort and do these kind of things uh, so thank you very much for that until next time take care and as always stay effective <laughs>